DaVinci Resolve Studio on a Mac is powerful, but it's not perfect. After using it intensely on long-form documentary-style videos for about five months, I want to share with you the four things I absolutely love about DaVinci Resolve Studio on the Mac and the one thing that drives me absolutely crazy. Stick around to hear the one thing that nearly made me quit this software. But first, some context. I stepped away from this channel, Mac Video Magic, for a few months to try some new things, exercise my creative muscles a little bit. I was working on a series of long form documentary style videos, 15 to 20 minutes long each. Now these videos were pretty involved. There was lots of footage. There was stock footage, there was B-roll I'd recorded myself. There was lots of stylized still images, animations, narration, music, sound effects. This was history channel level stuff, at least I thought it was. Anyway, I decided I was going to use DaVinci Resolve Studio for post-production, the paid version, not the free. This is pro level software with lots of amazing capabilities. And let me tell you, it did not disappoint in that regard. Resolve isn't just good, it's genuinely brilliant in so many ways. Now there are four major wins that completely seduced me, making me believe this would be my go-to software for major complex projects forever and ever. The first thing that I love about Resolve Studio on the Mac, well, I've been editing professionally since the early 90s. I feel comfortable with a familiar, more traditional editing interface. Coming from other editors like Premiere back in the day, Avid, and the OG version of Final Cut Pro, Final Cut Pro 10's magnetic timeline and audio lanes can feel like learning a new language. But Resolve Edit, it feels like coming home. You get proper video and audio tracks, a source and record monitor, and a layout, once you get to know it, that just makes sense, at least to me. It's a professional track-based environment that lets you place things exactly where you want to. The intuitive, straightforward design may not be the most efficient at times, but it lets you get straight to work without having to decode the software. The second thing that I love about DaVinci Resolve Studio for the Mac, and I can't emphasize this enough, is the value of Resolve Studio with all its included apps. You're getting two video editors, Resolve Cut and its beefier sibling Resolve Edit, which I use most of the time. You get Fusion, a full feature 2D and 3D effects compositing and motion graphics application. You get Resolve Color, well, I don't need to explain that one. I mean, it's the industry standard. And you get Fairlight, which is a full-featured multi-track digital audio workstation along the lines of Avid Pro Tools, if you're familiar with that. But it's the integration of these different tools that pushes Resolve Studio to a whole other level. All these different tools are connected. So if I'm editing in Resolve Edit and I have a shot that I want to do some effects work with, all I have to do is select that shot on the timeline, then pop over to the Fusion page, and my shot is automatically set up, ready to apply my effects to. When I'm finished working in Fusion, I just pop back over to Edit, and that clip is automatically updated with all the effects that I applied in Fusion. This integrated workflow applies to all the other apps as well, or pages, I guess. Do you know how much time that workflow integration saves hours over the span of a long project, not having to export clips and then import them into other software, then re-export it out of there. Man, if Final Cut Pro, Motion, and Logic were bundled into a studio package with that same integration, all at the price roughly of Final Cut Pro, <laughs> the third thing that I love about DaVinci Resolve Studio on the Mac the AI toys. Oh, the AI. Now say what you want about the evils of AI. I get it. I'm on the fence with AI most of the time. But in this context, these are not just gimmicks. They are genuine jaw-dropping time savers. The AI audio assistant, one of my favorites. Now this thing saved me a phenomenal amount of time on the documentary style project that I was working on. Each of the videos I was working on typically had four to five audio tracks, including dialogue, voiceover narration, music, ambience, and sound effects. Now, blending all those different sources together to create a pleasing mix on a close to half hour long video would usually take me the better part of a day or longer. 
With Resolve's AI audio assistant, it took roughly two minutes. No, I'm not kidding. Now, to be fair, I did have to go back and tweak a few things, as is usually the case when you're working with AI. So let's be fair. We'll call it realistically 10 minutes per video. And the fourth thing that I love about Resolve Studio for the Mac is that I love Blackmagic Design's relentless innovation. While other companies can feel like they've slowed down, Blackmagic is constantly pushing the envelope, especially with AI. There's a real sense that they are hungry and passionate about building the future of post-production. With each major update, you get powerful new tools that aren't just minor tweaks, but genuine game changers. While an app like Final Cut Pro, I hate to say it, I really do, can feel comparatively stagnant. So with all these incredible features, Mike, why did you say you were about to walk away from this software at the beginning of this piece? Well, there's just one simple but incredibly impactful and downright frustrating reason. Crashes. So many crashes. Listen, I'm not running the latest, greatest Mac hardware. I'm on an M1 Max chip in a Mac Studio with 32 gigs of RAM. Not the latest and greatest, but still not a slouch. And the video I was working on was 1080p. Now, if you know me, you know I'm constantly troubleshooting. I troubleshoot my software constantly and my hardware constantly. And for this, I did the same thing. I went through all the forums. I did all the research. I did all the resets. I did all the restarts. But for the life of me, I couldn't figure out what was happening. The pattern of crashes was just so unpredictable. Sometimes it would crash when I was using a resource intensive tool like Magic Mask. Sometimes it would crash when I was using a third party plugin. Other times I just stepped away from my Mac to grab some water. I come back, my Mac is asleep. I wake it up and Resolve Studio has crashed again. Sometimes it wasn't even a full on crash. Sometimes the software would just hang indefinitely, it seemed. So I'd have to force quit it. So I ended up with this constant low level of anxiety while I was editing, constantly hitting command S to save after every edit or operation or adjustment that I made, because I just didn't know when the next crash was going to hit. Now, to Blackmagic Design's credit, they are constantly updating Resolve Studio for the Mac, and I'm seeing fewer crashes. But I'll still get the odd one coming out of nowhere, like the going to sleep crash, which is just bizarre. Final Cut Pro is not exactly wowing me right now with its development course, but it's solid, it's stable. So is that it for me and DaVinci Resolve Studio on the Mac? No, <laughs> not at all, no way. Having to hit Command S constantly is a small price to pay for all the amazing functionality and features in this amazing editing software. And going on Black Magic Design's track record, and maybe I'm just being naive, but I trust things will get better on the Mac side. Listen, every software has its issues, whether it's stability or features or lack of innovation. Nothing's perfect. As the saying goes, and especially with software and hardware and tech in general, sometimes you have to pick your poison. What can you live with? But please let me know in the comments if you've experienced this with DaVinci Resolve Studio on the Mac, all these crashes. I mean, maybe it's just me. I don't know. In the meantime, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.